This is WGTV Today. Today is Thursday. Welcome to Thursday. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning and thank you for joining us. And we're here to tell you about things going on around the Wayne County community and maybe an interview or two to, with some interesting people. And, That's right. And I think we have a great show lined up for you today. Tell them who's on today's program. We really program. do. We have Cricket Davis in today, and she's here to talk about a new program here in our community. It's called Darkness to Light, Stewards of Children. And then we also <coughs> have someone from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Would you like to tell them who it is? Chief Master Sergeant, I believe his name, is it Graven? I believe it's Graven. But anyway, Chief Master Sergeant with the uh, uh, with Seymour Johnson with Air Force Base, wing. with the 4th Fighter Wing, is going to be with us. And uh, he is in a, a very, he's in a very good position out at the base. And he's going to tell you all about that. Really exciting. It really and is. His story is really neat. It is. And he's just a great guy. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking forward to your hearing what he has to say. That's exactly right. I'll see more Johnson. September 19th, just a couple of days away from the first mm -hmm. day of fall. And here it is. Temperatures are still mild. We have not had much of a, of a difficult summer. No, it has been have. rather humid at times. And lots of rain. Lots of rain. Lots, lots of rain. Wow, all the <laughs> rain we've had. But it's it's been good if <laughs> if you don't mind cutting the grass. It's been a great year for That's rain. That's exactly right. That's right. And this weekend, of course, is the Hillbilly Hike. It is that this weekend. That's this weekend. Okay. All right. It is this weekend. Waynesboro Park. Want to see you there? If you are not a participant, but you'd like to just come out and see what it's all about, mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting. I've been to the last two, and I will say mm -hmm. they are quite the unique. Obstacle course. Now, for someone who <laughs> yes, indeed, it is unique. You get yes, really, really dirty. For someone who is uh, uh, serious about uh, obstacle courses, it is very competitive. Oh my goodness! Highly yes, highly competitive. You're on a team, a team of four, right? And you are those that are competitive are trying to get through all the obstacles in the shortest amount of time, right? And but, complete each one. But you don't have to be in no, competition. You can just do it for fun. Just do it for fun. It's a blast, and you don't have to hurry to get through it. You can and you and you. It's a hillbilly theme, so you dress in your best hillbilly attire right. and come on out to Waynesboro Park. And it is quite interesting. They have an award ceremony afterwards where they give out wonderful colored. Hold on, um, it'll come to me. It'll come to her. They're on a car on the wheels. Hubcaps. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding! No, I'm not. You, you win hubcaps. You win hubcaps. Some I are gold, it. some are silver, some are from different kinds of cars. Mm. Oh yes, it's it quite uh, interesting. It's a hillbilly yeah. hike, Wayne. Well, what do you expect? I love hubcaps. <laughs> a lot of people, you know, you don't see many hubcaps anymore. <laughs> Everybody's using rims on their cars, and you don't see hubcaps anymore. Well, you, you get hubcaps as your I big old award. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. That's a great experience. So come on out and join us at Waynesboro Park. Starts at 8 o'clock in the morning and it'll last till about 2 or 2.30. The year was 1356. Okay. Ah, yes, I remember it well. 1356, <laughs> in a landmark battle of the, one hun of the Hundred Years' War, English Prince Edward defeating, uh, defeated the French at Poitiers. Now, they called it the Hundred Years' War, but actually it was 116 years long. That's but who's counting? Pretty, pretty long. Yeah, okay. Anyway, anyway. And other stuff happened. Uh, American forces under General Gates met, uh, met British troops led by General Burgoyne at Saratoga Springs, New York, this day, 1777, as the uh, war with Great Britain, our war of independence, was well underway. That's right. All right. What else? What you got? Well, don't forget to remind them to put on their calendar October the 11th is the next time the Shriners will have their fish fry. Yes. Ooh, I love that. I know only, you do, so I'll let you do. tell the story because you only, love it. Look, it's only $7, and that $7, <laughs> the net proceeds go to benefit the Shriners Children's Hospital. That's right. This, the fall Shriners Fish Fry is for the Children's Hospital. You would not believe how important this is. This helps children, and it's so serious. Now, the Shriners have done this for years. They do a wonderful job raising money for the Children's Hospitals. Now, how many locations will they have? Today, the, uh, this year, this fall, they only have two locations. They normally have three, but they're doing something out at Herman Park that's going to conflict. So at Herman Park Center, you'll be able to drive through, you'll be able to pick up, or you'll be able to eat in at that nice. one location. The other location is in Mount Olive on Highway 55, right across from the food line and across from the Mount Olive Center. 
across the street yeah, there. Right beside Robert's Machine Shop? Right beside Robert's Machine Shop. And let me tell you something. Same it's place a, they've been forever. That's the same place they've been, but it's a drive through only. But here's the thing. They move through so quickly. They do. <laughs> they move through so quickly. You barely get your car stopped, and they bring it out, and they know how many you want. You just tell you hold it between one or two or three or six or ten. They bring it out to you, and it just you're on your way. It just takes no time at all. For a great cause. And it's for a wonderful cause. Fried fish, coleslaw, potato salad, and, and hush puppies. <laughs> Sounds great. It does. It, it is great. Makes me hungry. Uh, me too. That's probably I can't not the wait. best breakfast to have. Se well, $7. But it's a good lunch or dinner. It is a good lunch, and the money is so important. But look, give more than $7. I usually try to give 8 or 10 Okay. So you give them a little tip. Yeah, give them extra money. I mean, it's going to the children's hospitals for crying out loud. That's Why right. not? All right, we'll tell you more about that later on. That's right. Well, stay tuned. We're going to hear from Cricket Davis from the Family Y. And, of course, don't forget, we're going to hear from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base and a special new visitor. Hello, joining me in the studio today is Cricket Davis from your Goldsboro Family Y, and she's here to talk about a new program that is being implemented in our community. It's called Darkness to Light. Good morning, Cricket. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me today. Yes, we're excited to hear about this program, Darkness to Light. You've been working on this for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an overview of what Darkness to Light is? Darkness to Light is, um, it's actually called Darkness to Light Stewards of Children, and it's a child sexual abuse prevention program for adults. Um, it started in South Carolina uh, probably about eight years ago and, and basically what it is is to help educate adults on how to minimize opportunity and what we need to do as a community to take a united stand against child sexual abuse. And then it also goes into the signs and what to look for. You know, we don't want to be on the reactionary side, but we are oftentimes. Um, and a lot of times people don't know what to look for because it's not yeah. clear-cut signs like you would think it would be. Well, is this something that is predominant in our in our particular neighborhoods in our particular community or is this a nationwide problem it's a nationwide problem and it's it's the statistics are harrowing I mean it um, when you're looking at one in every four girls will be sexually abused by the time they're 18 years old and one in six boys will be sexually abused by the time they're 18 years old it's just that is shocking. horrible it's horrific it's horrific and these these are reported cases only I mean so you so who you, knows how yeah. many are not reported mm -hmm. One in every four girls mm -hmm. by the time they're 18, mm -hmm. and one in every six boys. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's, it's just so, the numbers are epidemic to me. And, and then, you know, some of the things that go along with it are, are the education piece. Like, you know, we were always told, you mm -hmm. grew up like I did, mm -hmm. don't talk to strangers. Exactly. You need to worry about the stranger in the park, blah, blah, blah. 90% of these children know their perpetrators. So they're not strangers that are... 60% oh. of them are family members, relatives, um, and the other, you know, 30% of that are people in positions of trust. And shame on us for doing that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we tell our kids to respect their elders, you know, and I'm not saying that we don't want our children to have manners, but we need to empower our kids mm. to be able to say no. And by the same token, we don't need to put this on the kids because people are like, well, you know, I explained to my kids to not talk to so-and-so and this, that, and the other. A five-year-old, I mean, you can't do that to a five-year-old. Right. That's not fair. We're the adults. We need to protect our children. We need to be adults and act mm -hmm. like adults. Well, tell me some of the, the steps. I know there's five steps to protecting our children that people will learn about in this program. Tell me more about those steps. Well, the first one is learn the facts, and it's, you know, learn the, the statistics, learning the signs, putting the perpetrators on notice. I mean, you know, when you have, even when you have a babysitter, um, you want to minimize these times when there's one-on-one -on -one behavior. It's, it's good for that to happen, but you also want to be stopping in sometimes, right. you know, and checking in and making sure what's going on, then talking to your child after that and just asking them things because mm -hmm. when these, when the perpetrators are put on notice, so to speak, they're, they're less go, likely. They're, yeah, they're going to go somewhere else right. because they know that somebody's looking for mm -hmm. the signs and, and whatnot because, you know, people go, well, you know, we do background checks, and, and that's, that's due that's diligence, right, right. and we need to do that. But when you look at the amount of people that are never reported, you don't know. Mm. You don't know, and you don't want to make people so paranoid that they don't trust anyone. Right. And so, you know, that's the other important thing is you don't want everybody to be freaking out about it. Right. It is a huge problem, but we can do something about it mm -hmm. without 
you know, causing a bunch of drama and different things. Or well, whatever. making ourselves aware mm -hmm. of what to look for and uh, like these five steps, mm -hmm. what to ask our children, how to how to embrace all of this. Then we're pr empowering ourselves as well as adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the other steps? Um, and we talked about minimizing opportunity. You know, if you have a child that's in daycare. Um, or in the schools, they don't have, you know, you don't have one-on-one -on -one situations right. with kids. You know, there's one of the teachers on the, on the, one of the videos is saying, you know, I was in the, in the classroom with one of my kids after school, janitor came in and took a trash can out, closed the door behind him. And another teacher came by and said, you don't, you need to make sure that door is not closed. He said, you know, and it wasn't a situation that I was trying to take advantage of that. He said, you just, you know, you got to condition yourself right. to always make sure that you're transparent. Right. Right. So, I mean, that that's, hmm. you know, so important and make sure that... So even as adults, we're protecting ourselves. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then um, talk about it. And that's, I think, that's one of the most difficult things because people go, well, I mean, how do you have a conversation with a five-year-old? Um, there's some tremendous resources out there. And in fact, we've got a young lady in our community, Selena, um, and I'm going to say her name wrong. I think it's Bennett. Anyway, she, she has a book called Joey Wants to Know. And you can go Google it, Joey Wants to Know dot com dot org mm -hmm. and it goes through and talks to the kids about inappropriate and appropriate touch you know oh, so yes, that, I've, I've heard yeah, about that it's book. wonderful mm -hmm. I mean it sets the scene for the parents and you know because that's not a conversation that you you know yeah, I'm very mean, comfortable with or we don't we don't we're not born knowing how to have right, that conversation right. and you want to talk to all of them together I mean um, the former Miss America Ma Marilyn Van Derber was talking she said you know do we talk to the five-year-olds and the 14 year olds together yes we do do we tell them you know what's appropriate and what's not inappropriate, you know, what's inappropriate? Yes, we do. You know, because we want the older siblings to know that, you know, we don't tolerate this. Right. You know, as well as the younger kids, you know, do we ask them if your family members have been inappropriate with you? Yes, we do. You know, because kids are not going to come out and volunteer that information. Right. You know, they'll test the waters and, you know, I've seen incidences where we've had somebody go through this training and we've had a, you know, somebody come to some of these people that have been in the know because mm -hmm. they felt comfortable saying, is this okay? Or, and they test uh -huh. the waters a little bit because they want to see how you're going to react. Right. Um, and that's one of the, the huge things about the training is I tell people it's like, it is a shocking and appalling thing, but when a child discloses to you, you have got to, to keep act. it together and tell them how brave they are for telling and that it was a courageous thing and that you're going to help them. Because that's what they're looking. Because mm -hmm. if you flip out, mm -hmm. they're not going to tell you anything else. Exactly. That, that door is shut. You know, and you just want to keep them talking. You don't want to ask any leading questions, you know, but you want to get them to the point where they feel like they trust you more, and then, you know, you go from there. But, I mean, that first <clears throat> initial contact yes. is pivotal about what's going to go on with the rest of that. So this is a training that is being offered here in our community. Mm -hmm. This is the book, and like I said, it's Darkness to Light, Stewards of Children. Tell me more about how this came about. Who all participated in getting this particular program organized, and what will we see in this book? What we'll see in the book is it'll go through, of course, all the five steps. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, the company, Darkness to Light out of Charleston, is who put it together. And YMCA the USA is rolling this out as a national initiative because it's such an important thing. Oh, so this is a national program. It's a national program. And I've gone to, I've, I've talked with the mayor, the city manager, um, the chief of police, I've talked to Lee Smith, and everybody has been so supportive because we need to protect our children in mm. our community. So, you know, our message is going to be is we are united in this front. We are not going to tolerate this in our community. So we're having a community awareness meeting on um, Thursday, October 10th at lunch, and the Lord's Table has been gracious enough to let us use their facility because they have a tremendous meeting facility. Now, and who's invited to that? Everybody. Everybody's invited to it that wants to come. So tell me when that is again. It is Thursday, October 10th at noon. Okay. The Lord's and, Table. And they can call, and, and we're asking people to RSVP just simply so I have a head count. So they can call me at the Y, and the number is 919-778-8557. Okay. Um, you know, and bring whoever you want to. I mean, the more people that we arm with this information, the better off we're going to be. And at that meeting, we'll have time set up for trainings that if people want to sign up and come to the, to the two-hour long mm -hmm. training, that they can come do that. And because um, my goal is to train 5,000 people in, in our 2014 community. in Wayne County. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. She set that goal. That's right. And we're going to find a way. <laughs> we're on notice. We're going to find a way to help Cricket and the YMCA reach this goal of training that many people right here in our community so our children can be protected mm -hmm. and we'll know what to look for. So, what is in this book, Cricket? 
Um, in the book, like I said, it goes through the five steps and it's got a lot of education. It talks about specifically what child sexual abuse is. It talks specifically about you know, how to minimize opportunities. It gives you the information and the tools that you need to be able to do that. And along with the book, there's, <laughs> a, <survivors>. there's a survivor <laughs> video that um, is, is with it with also like some pediatricians and things. But it's a great thing for people to hear these survivors talk about what a devastating effect that's had on their life. So because, you hear personal stories. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think sometimes people kind of gloss over it, well, you know, it's just child sexual abuse. Well, it's not. I mean, you're talking about somebody's life. Exactly. You know, and there's, you know, I hate to keep mentioning Marilyn Van, Van Derber, but she's just been such a key component to this training. Um, she was sexually abused by her father from the time she was five until she was 18 years old. People may not know who she is. She, is, she was Miss America in 1957. Um, she speaks nationwide on the topic and, and has been just you know, a true advocate. Yeah, she's been unflailing in her inner thing. It's just wonderful. So there's, there's, and I always tell people, you know, it's like there may be some things in this video that you're uncomfortable with, you know, the conversation because people are very blunt right. and to the point because they want you to see why we need to protect our children. What exactly is happening? You know, because mm -hmm. we're talking about emotional distress, physical distress, you know, the whole gambit. And, and the children are our future. That's exactly right. So we've got to protect them. And it's them. our job to protect mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. as parents mm -hmm. and as adults in our community. So you're offering this training, but first you're going to have a, a meeting to talk about it, tell about it, get it organized. Tell mm -hmm. us one more time when it is. It's going to be on Thursday, October 10th at noon at the Lord's Table. Um, and they can contact you, you. Mm -hmm. if they're interested in coming just to RSVP for a head count. And tell right. us one more time how they can reach you. They can call me at the Y, 919-778-8557 or they can go on our website and just email me directly. And our website is um, goldsboroymca.org. Wonderful. So if, if it's easier to do that, then they can just shoot me an email. Great. Well, thank you, Cricket, for coming and talking about this very important topic here in our community and across the nation. Darkness to light, stewards of children. You have the opportunity to come and help learn how to protect our children. Visit the website, talk to Cricket, find out more about it. We'd love to have you there. And this is what's happening in our community. Welcome back to WGTV Today. On the show today, we have Chief Master Sergeant Jeff Craver from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, 4th Fighter Wing. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. We are always honored to have some representatives from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base join us and give us more information on what's happening on the base and how it affects us locally in our city. Well, we, uh, you know, as part of my duties and responsibilities as the Command Chief for the 4th Fighter Wing, we, we are always looking for opportunities to to partner with the base and, and to heighten the community involvement. We know that the, the history of the wing mm -hmm. has, a, has a long heritage and a long history and a long standing community involvement. So we're always looking for opportunities to, uh, to go out and partner with the Goldsboro community. Well, as our mayor says quite often, we are very honored and blessed to have two wings in the city limits, the 916th and the 4th. Yes, ma'am. So he is always spreading that good news. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, tell me more about how you like Goldsboro now that you're here, and how long have you been in Goldsboro, North Carolina? My family and I arrived in Goldsboro toward the end of July, so just over a month. And so we just have received such a warm welcome here, and you know, we're really excited to be here and be part of the Goldsboro community. You know, as, as military members, we're, we're a little bit transitory in nature. So, you know, this is 27 and a half years in uniform now. This will be my 12th move. Wow. So it's, it's nice to get back to uh, the United States. It's nice to get back to a community that has such great military support as Goldsboro. So we are, we are really enjoying our time here thus far. Well, that is what we like to hear, and we hear it over and over, and we're thrilled. So you said back to the United States. So tell me, where were you before? Well, we were, we were given the opportunity, and it was kind of a hardship tour, to be honest with you. You know, it, we were in Avi Aviano, Italy. Oh, so, I feel so sorry for yeah, you. Well, you know, it was tough duty, but <laughs> uh, somebody, yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> somebody, had to, somebody had to take one for the team. So yeah. it was uh, just a glorious assignment. We were nestled in the, the foothills of the Dolomiti mountain range up in northern Italy, about 45 minutes north of Venice. Oh, so, such a know, shame. Even if you didn't feel like cooking, you hopped on the train and went and ate pasta with your, with your loved <laughs> one uh, in the great city of Venice. So it was just a great... Uh, opportunity for us. We actually spent eight years. Our last I eight was years was in, uh, was in Europe. Part of that was in Germany, and then we moved down to Italy. So it's again, Europe was nice, 
but it's it's certainly nice to be back home. Oh, that's wonderful. So eight years there. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Do you have other family that went along with you? I have uh, a wife and three daughters. And so I have a 21-year-old daughter who is married, uh, married another service member in Italy, and she stayed in Italy. Oh. Uh, I have two other daughters, a junior in Lee University out in Cleveland, Tennessee, and then a uh, freshman that's going to school at Appalachian State up in Boone, Oh, great. North Carolina. Yeah, it's a great school. Yes, ma'am. Hear mighty good things about it. Well, tell me about what are some of your plans. While you're stationed here in Goldsboro, what would you like to do and what would you like to see? Well, our mission here in uh, the Ford Fighter Wing is to provide dominant strike eagle air power anytime, anyplace. And so we have to do that by preparing our airmen and our families, you know, anytime that the, the nation needs our, mm -hmm. our specialty. So our plans for the future and for the wing are to make sure that the airmen and the family are, are ready at any time. We do that through vigorous training. We do that through opportunities to uh, take advantage of developmental opportunities to take care of our family and, and uh, our airmen. About Goldsboro, what is it you like about Goldsboro? You mentioned that you, you like the community feel, but is there anything else that you particularly have found so far? I know you've only been here a very short time. But. Yes, ma'am, and, and just a small taste that we've seen thus far is just the overwhelming support that we have to the, the men and women who serve at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. You know, unfortunately, you, you don't always see that. But, mm. you know, as you, as you roll out that gate and you, you interact with the, the local towns, people here in Goldsboro and around Wayne County, it's very, very apparent that there's, there's a strong tie to the base. There's a strong tie, strong support to our men and women in uniform, and that's very, very appreciative. That's exactly right. You know, we, we hear it on a, a daily basis when we're out and about. Wayne and I, which is my, my cohort, my, my other one that we, we run a show together, as you know, and we talk about it all the time, how as we go through our daily lives in our community, we see you airmen out and about. It reminds us how honored we are that you all are right here in our community, and you're a part of our community. You're not on your own. You're not on some little island. You are a part of Goldsboro and Wayne County. Well, and that's, our, that's really our ultimate goal, is to make sure that we, we bring men and women from all over the nation into Seymour Johnson and they interact with the community. We're going to shop in your stores. We're going to interact with your business That's right. people. We're going to be neighbors. You're going to and your so, children going to our schools. Uh, yes, ma'am. So we have to be productive and we have to be a contributing partner in that. We can't stand inside the fences and, and, and hope to you know have everything taken care of for us. We're, we're, we want to be productive and contributing members to the community as well. And that's our ultimate goal for the, for the community and for the base. Well, tell me, other than the obvious location differences, what are some differences in Goldsboro, North Carolina, and the different places you were in Europe? Well, in Europe, it, it's, you know, of course you have the language barrier. So it's, it's of course, we're in the south here, so there's a little bit of a language barrier <laughs> there think? for me, too. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a little <laughs> bit of a challenge when you interact with the community. We talk about the strong military ties, and we saw that in Europe, too, to a certain degree. But nothing like the, the support and, and the the offer for assistance that, that I have seen in the 30 days here. They want to help in Europe. Uh, they certainly, you know, but there, there's some barriers there and there's some, some obstacles that we have to overcome. Number one, you know, being the language. It, sure. it, you know, and you can imagine if, if 4,000 Italians mm. moved to the city of Goldsboro and they all expected you to speak right. Italian. So it's a little bit uh, understandable that, you know, that language barrier is always going to be there. But the cultural and the, just the opportunities to be able to travel mm. and to bring that back, uh, it's been a phenomenal experience for my family and I. I was going to say the things that your children were able to experience and learn while they were there, that, that's a fantastic opportunity for them. Well, yes, ma'am. And, and an example of that is, you know, my, my daughter was studying uh, Roman architecture in, in college. Oh, and she when she raised her, well, she raised her hand and said, yeah, I've been to the Coliseum and I've seen St. Pete's, uh, you know, cathedral, and I've been to the Vatican, and, you know, of course the other students are kind of looking at her like she's, you know, <laughs> a, a Fordham student, but, you know, the, the opportunities that they've had over the, the mm. course of our career have been tremendous. That's fantastic. Well, tell me, what are you looking forward to in the future here in Goldsboro? Well, we're looking forward to, you know, this, this wing, the fourth fighter wing, is such a rich history, and, and we're really just trying to build and trying to stand on the shoulders of giants that have been created here in, mm -hmm. in the community. So, you know, my, my ultimate goal is to make sure that we don't go backwards. We want to continue to move forward and build on the programs and the processes and the community relationships that have already been established. 
I, I look forward to meeting with the, the various uh, uh, the various business people and the, vis the various community leaders to make sure that we can take care of not only the airmen and the mm -hmm. families inside the fence, but what, how we can partner together to take care of the community as a whole. Well, give me an example of a day in the life of your life. <laughs> well, there's an awful lot of meetings involved in, in the day of the life of, uh, of Chief Craver. But, you know, a typical day will start, you know, I'll, I'll wake up and I'll do some physical training exercise, you know, normally at about 5, 5.30 in the morning. And then, uh, you know, usually you come in and you check to, to see what, what's uh, on your calendar for the day. Uh, there's various meetings, there's various groups that I, that I advise and I, I interact with. And then, you know, my, the best part of my day, like earlier today, I spoke to a group of about 40 young airmen that have been in the Air Force for about three years. And they're, they're trying to decide whether or not they want to go forward. Mm. You know, they're at about the time where they're going to have to make a decision. Right. Whether, hey, do I want to do four more years, six more years? Do I want to go out and use this as an opportunity to, to launch another career? And so, you know, when you look in the face of that future, that, that's probably my best days where I can, can look and influence those young airmen that came when their nation called mm -hmm. them. It, it, you know, it's just an opportunity that, that I truly enjoy. Oh, it's got mighty gratifying. Yes, ma'am. Well, is there anything else that you would like to share with, with our Goldsboro community about your stay here in Goldsboro or anything that you're looking forward to? Well, we, we first of all, we want to thank you for just the warm welcome that we've received. My family and I, you know, wherever we go around town, the, the people that we meet, the people we've come in contact with, have been just such phenomenal hosts. So our goal is to get out and meet as many people as we can. Our goal is to you know, be a productive and contributing member to the Goldsboro community. And so we, we, we kind of work for y'all. So you know, if, if you see us out and about, please put us to work and let us know how, what, what we can do to help things in the community and in and around Seymour Johnson. Well, we certainly do appreciate you being in our community. We appreciate what you do on a daily basis. We're glad to have you all here in Goldsboro, North Carolina. If we can do anything for you, give us a call. You know where we are. All right, man. Well, I <laughs> and thank it. you so much for being on the show. And this is Chief Master Sergeant Jeff Graver with the 4th Fighter Wing here in Goldsboro, North Carolina, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. And this is what's happening in your community. <music>we really appreciate the, uh, the, uh, the Chief Master Sergeant coming in. That's great. That it's a, he's going to do a great job out of Seymour nice. Johnson. Very excited about Only it. Only been in Goldsboro a little over a month oh, or two and loving it already. And that's I'm what we you. like to hear. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy as well. From Italy to Goldsboro. Yeah. <laughs> from, hey, hey, Paisan. Hey, okay. <laughs> All what right. you got there? I've got a, a couple of birthdays I want to mention to you. All Remember right. Twiggy? You ever heard of Twiggy? Yes, of course. Twiggy, her name is Lawson. Mm -hmm. Twiggy, uh, her first name is Leslie. Leslie Twiggy Lawson turned 63 years today. Can you believe that? Wow. And she's still about that big around. Anyway, very lovely lady she is. She's 63 today. Trisha Yearwood, 48. Randolph Mantooth. Don't know Randolph. Yes, you do. do you I? remember the TV show Emergency? Vaguely, yes. Okay, he played the dark-haired guy. He's actually a Native American. A lot of people didn't realize okay. that. A Native American. And he and Kevin Tighe actually trained for the, uh, uh, for the part of, of, uh, of, of medics uh, for that program. Okay. And they were that close to getting certified. Wow. They could have been certified. I mean, That's unusual a, for a TV show. Very much so. They were very serious about this, and they did a great job. And they actually did a lot of their own work in that show. You see them climbing ladders and things like that. They actually did that. Uh, they took that job very seriously. Uh, he's 67 today. Uh, one of my favorite actors is David McCallum. The Brit is 79 years today. 79? He is, uh, first of all, he was on Man From U.N.C.L.E., of course, with uh, Robert, what's his name? Uh, he played, exactly, Ilya, uh, Ilya Kuryakin, uh, the Russian spy, the Russian agent. He's, uh, but he also went on to become Ducky on NCIS. Oh, that's okay? where I know him from. That's okay. where you know him from, Dr. Mallard. Is uh, David McCallum, 79 today. And another one of my favorites is a fellow by the name of Adam West. Batman on TV. Batman turns yep. 84 today. 84. 84. Can you believe that? That's right. He biffed and pouted his way to fame on ABC's <laughs> Batman. All right. Those are the birthdays for today. Well, how about that? How about that? <laughs> if it's your special day, make a wonderful day out of it. Do something special. Exactly right. Exacto Mundo. Don't forget, switch foot. The Grammy Award winning alternative rock band will be at Mount Olive College September the 27th, 7 o'clock p.m. 
Tickets are selling quickly. They are $20. You can purchase them at moc.edu. That's their website, or you can give them a call. They have all the information on their website, details for all their fall festival uh, concerts. But this is the biggie, September the 27th. Just remember, Makadu. What does that mean? M-O-C-E-D-U. Makadu. Crazy, Just, crazy. That'll work every time. <laughs> right, there's a dot in there somewhere. In there. I believe anyway, there I might forget. be. Anyway, <laughs> this day, 1519. Yes. The year the Ferdinand Magellan embarked uh, from Spain on his voyage to circumnavigate the world. He didn't make it. His ships did, however, but he still gets credit for it. Good well, for him. Well, he died. He, they killed him. But uh, it, uh, it's a long story. But uh, that happened on this day a long time ago. What you got? Oh, my gosh. Don't forget, I've talked about it all week, and I've had the days wrong a lot. Oh, here we go again. It's the right day. Here, here we go again. <laughs> this afternoon, 5.30, want to see you there, business after hours. That's today, right? It is today. Today must the be Chamber Thursday. of Commerce. Thursday. Uh, 5.30 to 7 at Doug Henry Buick GMAC right there on Highway 70. Wait a minute, where's it going to be? Pay attention. <laughs> Doug Henry Buick GMAC. On Highway 70. Okay, okay. Come out and join us and make some great business contacts and just have a nice time. There's free food and drinks. And it's just, oh a, boy. it is. And there's just a nice time for chamber members to come out and get to know one another. And if you're not a chamber member, it's a go. It's time to come on out and ask a, about it. Yes, go out, yes. In fact, go up to uh, Kate uh, Daniels or, or anybody with a chamber and say, look, I want to know more about this. And they'll take you in exactly as a guest. Right. They right. certainly will. That's right. And Love to a, have you. Chamber does good work. This Saturday, right. Hillbilly Hike. I already told you about that. Don't forget. That's right. And enjoy the weekend. It's going to be a great weekend. Do something. Do anything, but do something. Get out and move. Uh, move around. That's right. Good for you. And anyway, uh, we'll uh, have our, our special guest hosts on tomorrow. That's right. Right? That's right. Donald and Casey are going to be with us tomorrow. You'll enjoy them. They're couple of uh, really nice guys. They, they really are. You'll enjoy guys them. Guys and girls. Well, guy, a guy and a gal. A guy and a girl. <laughs> All right, that's all for today. Uh, thank goodness. We're <laughs> wrapping it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be back tomorrow, or they'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back Monday, okay? That's so right. until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best, and this is what's happening in your community.